but it is looking good for the 11 and one Philadelphia Eagles as they're the first team since 1987 to pass for 350 yards one week after rushing for 350 yards the week before. They can beat you any way they want, and this time it's through the air and with the arm of Jalen Hurts, 29 of 39 for 380 and three touchdowns. All right, here's a look at A.J. Brown and what he's been able to amass this season in regards to the entire receiving core of the Tennessee Titans. Did I mention known asset? Always better. Keep your picks. Give me A.J. Brown. All right, let's dig in here with Tyler Sullivan and Rick Spielman as we continue to assess the pace car, if you will, in the NFL. 11-1 now Philadelphia is this one looked like big boy football early on, some clanging and banging. And then Philadelphia just decides to go to the air and beat you in any different way. Tyler, we've talked about it, how multiple they are, this offensive attack. How dangerous does that make them on a week-to-week -week basis, even in a matchup where you expect the game to be tight? Yeah, I mean, you're talking about a team that has 10 touchdowns and over 900 yards of offense over the last two weeks, and they're doing it in a bunch of different ways, like you're saying. Jalen Hurts has been absolutely insane, obviously insane in this game today, and you talked about it with A.J. Brown. He's someone who I've been pointing to even going into the season, saying that I think he was going to have a Stephon Diggs-like impact when he went to Buffalo, what he did for Josh Allen, and we're seeing those same things of what A.J. Brown is doing for Jalen Hurts in this Eagles offense. It just creates an entirely different different animal that they opposing defenses have to defend. And so when you start looking at it from they can run the football. They can pass it. They have a guy that when even when he's covered, we saw a touchdown in this game where he was blanketed, A.J. Brown was, and for some way and somehow he was able to catch a touchdown pass on the back of a of a, def a defensive back there for the Tennessee Titans. It's just absolutely scary to think of what they're going to be able to do in the postseason because if one team is showing you that they're going to shut down the running game, they're more than happy to throw it all over the yard. And if they're Trying to stop the secondary, stop the, the passing game in the secondary, they're more than happy to run it down your throat. So for me, this is the most dangerous team in the NFL right now, specifically in the NFC, and I don't know if it's particularly close. Uh, Rick, I don't want to get desensitized to this because it's spectacular what we're watching right now. When you say 350 on the ground a week ago, 350 through the air this week, some teams would kill for 350 total yards in a game, and here they are getting it done in different ways. As you've watched this Eagles team develop throughout the year, what's taking you back most about the way they're getting the job done? That they can win either way. Uh, just like Tyler said, they can mm -hmm. win on the ground if they have to run the ball. They can win in the air. And, and the way Hurst has developed as a quarterback. And then you look at A.J. Uh, Brown and what he's doing. And like that last pass we saw, they uh, back in the scouting term, it said there's always uh, two dogs and one bone. And he's usually the dog that ends up getting the bone in those contested situations. So they are a dominant team on the offensive side of the ball right now. And what was a concern with the Philadelphia defense was not the pass rush. They sacked Tannehill six times, but could they stop Derrick Henry in the run? And they held Derrick Henry to less than three yards of carry. They held uh, Tennessee to under 100 yards rushing. When they can play that, then pin your ears back and rush the quarterback. This is what you see in a dominant performance that Philadelphia showed us today. Dominance doesn't even begin to tell the story as this has been a different level of dominance this season. 11 and 1, and they surely want that one back, right? Onward. Here's a look at what 11 and 1 has meant in the past for this franchise. You're going to get a look in a championship game. They won the NFL championship in 1949 when starting 11 and 1. They've lost in the Super Bowl in the two instances since, and here in 2022 with a head of steam, the Birds trying to fly deep into the playoffs once again. All right, let's dive in with Tyler Sullivan and Rick Spielman here. As it's been an exciting 1 p.m. slate here. Get things going, gentlemen. Let's start right there with that Ravens game that came down to the final swing of the leg. Uh, Tyler, I'll go your way here first because the Ravens get the result they need, but a lot does need to be explored, specifically here the health of one Lamar Jackson. We only know what we know, and that's he was ruled out with a knee injury after nursing a quad all week. Moving forward, for whether it be short-term or long-term without Lamar, what does this season look like for these Ravens, Tyler? Yeah, that's exactly right. It all hangs in the balance with Lamar Jackson, whether or not he is able to play 
next week when they travel to Pittsburgh or if it's a little bit down the line and they choose to rest him as they go down the stretch run here. They do have a little bit of a cushion here. It's it moving, you know, improving their record on the season to seven and four. But ultimately, this team kind of feels like they're stumbling down the stretch a little bit. I, I remember talking about them a few weeks ago, saying that they have a chance to be have the number one seed. You looked at their remaining schedule, it was the easiest at the time in the NFL. It includes games like this against a Denver Broncos team that can only manage nine points in a single game. And so the situation was there for them to go on a little bit of a run. But as it's been the case over the last few years with this team, injuries have gotten in the way, whether it's J.K. Dobbins, what's gone on last year in their backfield and in their secondary. And now the most important player to this franchise, Lamar Jackson. We don't know what his availability is going to be going forward. He obviously wasn't able to play the remainder of that game due to the knee injury. It's important because the Cincinnati Bengals are breathing down their throat. They're playing against Kansas City this week, but they are a team that is getting healthier. They are fully loaded. So right now, if Lamar Jackson isn't able to play over these next few weeks and it's Tyler Huntley, that doesn't spell particularly great news for them going forward in their playoff hopes. Uh, as you assess it, Rick, is Tyler Huntley a, a, a stopgap here that can keep the Ravens relevant here? Because they do have plenty to play for. We'll get to that here in a moment. But as you assess the quarterback room there, the drop off from Lamar to Tyler Huntley is something we've talked about in the past. How do you feel right now about the Ravens chances with Lamar up in the air? Yeah, uh, Huntley came in and did an excellent job last year when he had to fill in for Lamar and kept them afloat through this uh, through Lamar when he missed all those games. And in fact, I think I remember Hardball saying that he is good enough to be a starter in this league. Now, is he a guy that you can put the whole team on your back and go out and win games? They still have to play good defense. They still have to be able to run the ball. Uh, but he can go out and manage a game, and he has enough athletic and mobility skills uh, to make the Ravens competitive as they go down. But in my opinion, the Cincinnati Bengals are going to be right on their heels, mm -hmm. and they're playing better football than Baltimore is right now. Yeah, this was a key result, regardless of what Lamar's status is moving forward here for Baltimore. And we talk about these coachisms sometimes at this point of the year, the what's your why of it all. And it seems like Baltimore, I mean, stop me if I'm wrong here, Rick, but they're a team with everything to play for and still trying to define that why. Do you see a lack of motivation specifically early on in this game between these two because this is a Denver team that they are far and beyond better than at this point of the season. Yeah, no, they are, but Denver has struggled offensively, but defensively they've played pretty good, and Denver's defense have kept them in the games uh, every, every game this year. So they were playing against a very good defense today. They just played against a horrible offense. What's going to happen, though, if they get in a game situation like this, playing against a good defense, but also playing against an explosive offense, and that's where I think they can get exposed. Yeah, no, that's the big question, right? I mean, they have these next few weeks here, a lot of division opponents, teams that have very good defenses, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Cincinnati, even Atlanta keeps these games always, it feels like tight and, and close and they run and ground and pound. So they're going to need to bring their A game. This is going to be a big week or big, you know, stretch run here for Harbaugh. If there is going to be a scenario where Lamar Jackson misses time or it misses at least a few games here down the stretch. To me, it's all going to come down to whether this team can weather that storm because you never know if all of a sudden they start to stumble I'm looking at a game in week 18 in Cincinnati that could determine the AFC North and it like Rick, Rick, Rick was saying the Cincinnati Bengals feel like they're playing better football right now and if all of a sudden Lamar Jackson is forced to be sidelined here and you are dropping a few of these games to division opponents that's going to start opening the door here for Cincinnati it's going to make that week 18 game maybe the division winner of the whole thing. It's starting to get very, very interesting as we take a look at the fantasy performers coming out of a 10-9 ball game. is never going to be anything that blows you away. Tyler Huntley not likely to be in any starting lineups as he wasn't even in Baltimore's starting lineup at the start of the day. 15 fantasy points. Russell Wilson, his requisite nine, no touchdowns, no interceptions, really no nothing. Mark Andrews, you want more?